Hi, just a quick one. I'm down here in the dungeon, and it probably sounds like a dungeon, uh, down in the EV log lab buildings, my new storeroom, and I thought I would actually uh, replace the uh, lock here to match my uh, bunker, and um, yeah, it's just got a regular crappy uh, lockwood, you know, thing, easy to pick, easy to rake, whatever. I thought I'd do something a bit better than that. So I'm going to replace this with something which is almost unpickable almost it is check it out it is the abloy protec 2 lock now before everyone craps on in the comments down below lock picking lawyer lock picking lawyer oh, have you seen the lock picking lawyer he could pick this in two seconds lock picking lawyer no, I've challenged the lockpicking lawyer um, on uh, Twitter. This was a couple of years ago when I installed uh, this in my bunker and I uh, said, oh, I bet you he can't pick this or somebody keyed him in or something like that. <laughs> keyed him in, get it? Oh, I'm here all week. Um, somebody, yeah, alerted him and he actually replied, there's no lock I can't pick. And then I said, oh yeah, it's an Abloy Protec 2. And he said, Oh, yeah, I can't pick that one yet. So <laughs> the lockpicking lawyer cannot pick this lock. Apparently, there's only, I believe there's, I could be a little bit out of date, but I believe there's only one person so far who has picked the Abloy Protec 2, and that's another uh, YouTuber, and he's keeping it very secretive how he did it, designed his own custom tools to do it, and everything else. So anyway, um, it's a 12-cylinder um, uh, disc uh, system. I won't show you the key, of course, um, but well, here's a photo of what it uh, looks like. And they do actually market it as virtually pick-proof, although it, it was for quite a few years, but yet yeah, somebody has now done it with a specialised tool. I'm not sure if you can even buy that. Um, a specialized tool on the market you might be able to now but anyway it's incredibly difficult to pick so it's resistant to bumping and scraping and all sorts of um, regular attacks so uh, pretty much um, and this will give me the best possible security if you want to break in to my bunker or my uh, new dungeon here you pretty much you probably have to like drill the lock or some other way and no you can't get in here and slide attack it and stuff like that I've made sure that's not possible so uh, this is pretty much the ducks guts lock on the market the abloy protec 2 so anyway i'm going to take this out and hopefully i can get in there and uh, replace this let's go all right so we'll take off the outer strike plate let's get the back off here oh geez that's that's a bit tough I'm putting a lot of force into that that ain't easy i don't think this has ever been done undone since the building was built i think she's going to come out yep no wackers. Then that front's just going to lift off. No problem. Now, of course, uh, this is like an oval version of this, but the Abloy Protect 2, it actually comes, uh, like you can get them in padlocks and you can get them in like all sorts of different ones. This is designed uh, to replace the Lockwood um, oval cylinder that we have here in Australia. This is just a common office. This is probably the most uh, common uh, office type uh, lock installed here. But, you know, your mileage may vary overseas. And we have to lift the, uh, the outer plate off. Aha! Uh -huh. And we get access to the innards. It's two levels of screws. We've got two more here. And you can see that there's a pin there. That's a locking pin, which goes all the way through and goes through that hole on there like that. And that's what stops the whole cylinder from coming out. Now, this one's actually it's really tight in there. Geez, whoever did the, the wood for this hats off but there you go now we're now we're in and I'm not actually sure if we had to go that far actually um, whoops and could yeah we probably could have just removed the pin before right I don't think I actually needed to go that far so I'll put that back now let's see if we can pull this pin out there we go we should just be able to pull it out and cylinder should just pop right out. Nice. Now, I don't know my uh, lock terminology, sorry, but this plate on the back, you see the screws there, so we'll have to exchange that over to here, and uh, that should, it looks like, it should be completely compatible. So I've attached that on there now, and 
this should rotate ta -da, with the key, like that. Beautiful. I can't really show you uh, the guts inside there. I don't want to take it all out because, yeah, that would ruin my day. <clears throat> so let's just whack that in there. Uh, okay. Doesn't feel like it's all the way in, but anyway. It's good. Yeah. Not sure what's going on there. All right. That one feels the same. All right. So let's hold that in there and see if we can wiggle the pin back in. Nope. Nope. No, I don't think I've got it in. There's going to be some trick here. Maybe I should have brought a hammer down. No, I was able to get the original Lockwood back in. But this one, this one ain't, this one ain't budging. Percussive maintenance. Maybe there's some other trick. I don't know. This is obviously not my day job. Slide it back, slide it up, slide it down. Nah. Well, it definitely fits. Um, and as far as I can tell, the tolerances are all, you know, with my Mark I eyeball, they all look identical. So I'm not, not sure what the deal is. The only potential problem I can see is that this is the new Protec. This is the old Lockwood. And I think if you look at the edge here, it's overlapping the hole a bit more than this one or is that my imagination oh i reckon they just haven't shaved off quite enough and that seems to be enough to not make it go all the way in there's probably like half a millimeter in it or something i i don't think it's it, damn close but i my mark one eyeball is telling me that that one slightly overlaps the hole a bit more than that one. Oh, i don't know yeah, I can really feel it engaging the countersink in there and I can't pull it back out if I put pressure on it. So it's obviously going into the countersink, but it's just not going into the hole. There's just, the, the tolerance just doesn't allow it. So I guess there's a couple of ways you can get around this. One would be to um, shave a bit more off there so it sinks in a bit further. And the other one would be to, um, to well, drill the hole just a smidgen bigger. Um, yeah, oh, don't have to do either. Got it. Um, yeah, just had to use a bigger hammer and uh, it went in. So I'll put that plate back on. So yes, there's absolutely no need to take this plate off. Um, but if you want to like jiggle, if you have to like jiggle the internal uh, module in there, like to get stuff back in place, then yeah, you have to do that. And uh, to do that, you have to take out the uh, the wood screws up here which uh, screw the plate into the door frame and these ones which go um, metal into metal so this just holds in the whole internal block we just whack that in yep that goes in so before i try it it's going to whack it all back together and that there is our little pin which well that just sits there like that it's a bit how you're doing but it's supposed to be like that and that goes into the spring part of the handle there so you gotta line that up there we go won't tighten that up too much just want to try it at the moment can't turn it whack it in turn it ta -da! there we go ah it's like a bought one winner winner chicken dinner put that all back in and that is the completed lock there you go. So there you have it. I hereby challenge the lock picking lawyer yet again to pick the Abloy ProTech 2. What's in it? Well, I don't know. You win the internet. You win the YouTubes. Um, so yeah, <laughs> leave it in his comments <laughs> on his next video. Abloy, Abloy, ProTech 2, ProTech 2. <laughs> Come on, have a go, you mug. Catch you next time.